Okay, it is Carolyn Benny. Uh, again, this is my attempt number two today of my Facebook Live. I hope all of you guys can come back in and find me. I'm not having much luck today, but hopefully we can turn this around. Um, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Australia and every Friday morning I come into my craft room and make a card with you to help inspire you with your card making and your creativity. Um, so let me show you the card that we're making today because if you haven't already been with me then maybe you haven't seen it. Good morning again Helen. Hey Kayla, I can see a few people coming in finding me. Um, so this is the card that we're making today. We're using the watercolour pencils that are available this month. So if you are interested in these additional colours to our current range of watercolour pencils, you'll need to go order them this month. And they are very delicious. Let me just pull them out. Super delicious colours. So I thought I'd better play with them. I have been playing, I have made a few things. A lot of things have ended up in the bin. Because I, you know, do you have days like that where a lot of stuff ends up in the bin? You know, do you, or do you use everything you make? I've kind of, I've, I binned a lot of stuff yesterday. That wasn't one of my best creative days. But anyway, so here we are back again. I had to start and stop. And so I hope everybody's finding the video again. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Kerry. Back again. I know, it's crazy. But it just goes to show that I should not touch. Don't touch the camera while you're Facebook living because Facebook doesn't like it. It's precious like that. It does not like to be touched and they end up being sideways and crazy. Um, but there you go. Anyways, good morning, Sherry. How are you going? Yeah, hopefully the day keeps getting better for me because it's been, do you know what? It probably didn't help that I was up like to crazy hour last night preparing for my stamping retreat. There's nothing like doing everything last minute, right? Um, but you know, that's what happens. Hey Janice, hey Linda, how you going? Lovely that everybody's pouring in and found me even though I was, I had to start again. Okay, so let's get crafting. We're going to be using the new stamp set Country Home today. It's available to purchase as of the 1st of September from the new holiday catalogue, which is this one here. If you are one of my VIP customers, which means you have purchased from me in the last six months, um, then you will be getting one of these catalogues set posted to you from me for free uh, next week so look out for that in your letterbox something to have your cup of coffee with um, of course we've still got our beautiful annual catalogue cruising and uh, cruising along happily um, so the 5th of September is that right Kerry hmm. Oh, you're right, Kerry. The 5th of September it goes live. See, I need to have people telling me stuff because otherwise I just fluff along. So, um, the annual catalogue is still cruising along. If you're wanting to get your Christmas cards going, don't forget, we've got lots of Christmas stuff in this annual catalogue, so don't forget about it, you know. Don't um, get that dust off of it and have another look at the annual catalog. There's lots of fun stuff in it. Good morning, Laura. How are you? The beautiful Laura has arrived. But this stamp set is from the upcoming catalog, so you can't get it quite yet. But I'm just gonna tease you with it because it's, it's really a lovely style that I like and I can color with it and I've got new pencils to color with. So life is good. Life is good. All right, I'm gonna flip you guys over and we're going to start this colouring process and see if things go to plan. Alright, let's see. I'm going to flip you over, see if I don't stuff. Now I have got my retreat this weekend. Every year I do a retreat for my beautiful Midnight Inklings crafters. We started off um, pretty much in Adelaide team. We're now kind of all over Australia. 
um, from WA to Queensland to New South Wales. So it's um it's kind of we we only have like half the team at at our event, which is a little sad. But um, I'm going to be doing some video demonstrations for the team tonight so hopefully that keeps everybody happy now can you hear me now guys um because i've just popped my earbud in so i'm just wondering if it's picking up my voice let me know in the comments if that's nice and loud for you because i want you to be able to see i want you to be able to hear what i'm saying as well as see what i'm doing okay I can see oh <laughs> yes you can hear me yay is it nice and loud Helen I hope so okay so can you the volume is low but softer yeah okay well that's interesting because I because my son has stolen my Apple earbud and I'm not sure, oh hang on, I'll swap to this one, see if this one works better. Please. Okay, how does this one sound? Is that better? Because I had to scurry around the house, because usually I hide my special earbud, um, I hide it from my children because they steal everything. But they must have found my stash of special earbuds. <laughs> hey Anne, how are you? Tell me, is this one any better? I found, I plugged in a different one. Anyways, I hope, because I'm not sure which ones have the microphones on them and which ones don't. <laughs> techno, techno fool that I am. All right, so I'll just, uh, it's okay. Good. All right. I hope I hope it's okay. All right. So let's have a little bow peep. What I'm doing today. I'm just gonna um, bring you guys. That'll be okay. Good. I'm glad that it's all coming together today. So this is our card we're making today, and I just wanted to show it to you close up. It's um, using watercolour, the Stampin' Up! watercolour paper, which I love. I have used a number of other papers. Sometimes I try and um, I try and get away with things cheaper. You know, we all do that, don't we? We go, oh, look, I'll buy some cheap paper and that'll be great. It's actually, it's not great. You really need to spend a bit of money on watercolour paper. There's just no, I need to flip it. Thank you, beautiful Mel. If, honestly, if I didn't have you guys to sort me out, what would I do? I just don't know what I'd do. Okay. Um, so, there we are. Um, so, yeah, see, look, I can, I can, I can, you know, do two things at once. Promise. So there we are. So that is the card that we're making. Um, and I want to show you how I did it. It's not super hard, but we've been playing a, diff a few different ways with our watercolour pencils over the last few weeks. And I thought I would keep on that road just so you can see how diverse watercolour pencils, the Stampin' Up! watercolour pencils really can be. Um, here is the new bunch of colours that we've now got just for this month. So if you've already got some watercolour pencils, you'll find that there is a few gaps in our range currently. Now, I've got two packets. There's, I've got two bunches of, because you know, I, I have watercolour pencil issues. So I bought two packets of our other colours. So now I can't show them to you individually because they're all mixed in together. Look at my poor little white. I love the white, you can tell, can't you? So along with these colours, we've now got these colours, which really does make extend the range and it gives you lots of different choices. But I'm going to try and stick mostly with these colours today. I think I do bring in some grey, but otherwise uh, I'm going to stick with mostly these colours. So let me show you 
I've got a piece of water, uh, Stampin' Up! watercolour paper and I've just trimmed it. It's 10 by 10 centimetres and I've got just our size D block. And I tend to use our blocks an awful lot, not just to stick stamps on, but I use them for all sorts of things. And um, I colour on top of them. Um, I don't know. I think I, I, I do like... I use them a lot. Oh, hello. I've got someone in from Georgia. Hey, Tony. Is it Don Donia? Donia. A few different beautiful people coming in. Say hello as you come in. I'll keep um, flicking to see all the comments as I go along. So ask lots of questions. I don't, you know, I try and do my best to answer all the questions, okay? So... This is just a regular D block and I've got our balmy blue, one of our new blues, which is, it's a light blue, but it's actually, it comes out pretty strong on the, um, when you colour with it. So I just want you to be, I said it correctly, yay! <laughs> I'm not very good with names, so I hope, I'm glad when I get things right. Um, okay, so I'm just going to actually put my block straight to my ink pad and you have to just squish it on a little, okay? Now, if I was to put this down, it would be super strong, okay? So just very gently, I'm going to blot it off. Did that come up? Can you see? Yeah, very gently blotting it off. Okay, and then I'm going to center it on my water color paper and really push that baby down. There we go. There's that color. So that's just you could actually if you did that a bit stronger, you could you could definitely like if you didn't blotch it off, it would come off stronger. The other thing you could do as well is get a little bit of um, your water spritzer and you could spritz the block beforehand and pop that on and it would even be a more of a watery feel um, it just really depends on how you want it to look now I kind of I want it to look a little bit softer so I'm just I have to check which spritzer I'm using because one's got bleach in it and one's got water and I stuff that up nearly every time. So that's not a good idea. Hey Lisa, how are you? All right, so I'm just going to spritz a little bit of watercolour. Hmm, that had a little bit of yellow in it somewhere. That's interesting. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I've spritzed it a little bit. So the water is just running a little. Now I'm going to get my heat gun and dry that up oh, that spritzed a little bit more than I wanted Let's get my tissue you guys are going to be so proud of me because I went out and purposely bought a box of tissues for my stamp room I was so sick of always forgetting the tissues when I did a Facebook live it's a problem. Now I have a box of tissues, but you know what's going to happen, don't you? The kids are going to find that box of tissues and then that's going to be it. It's going to be gone. Okay. All right, so I've just dried that off a little. Now I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus and let's have a look. What do we want to do? I think we'll do, still stick with our little jug there. I'm going to flip you over. So the good thing about the clear stamps is that you can kind of position them and see if where they look nice. So I think that one's going to look good there. And then I just want to make sure I've got enough room for 
my flowers before I stick anything down, right? Okay, so that's going to be good. Now we can pop that in like so. So this is one of the images that you can use. You, there's also a little, um, as far as the kind of vase, you're the pot. There's this one here, which is super cute too. And I used that one yesterday, but I've decided to go for this one. So I'm just closing up that ink pad. I suspect I'm going to, you love the jug, it's super cute. Yes, I know, me too, me too. Now, <clears throat> stays on ink now the good thing I find about a stamp positioning tool such as this one is that I find sometimes with watercolor paper the um, well just like that the image doesn't come out super dark the first time that you stamp it and you've always just kind of had to deal with that before but now with the Stamparatus, so stamp positioning tool, you can just keep going over it until you get the colour depth that you're after. Yeah, so <clears throat> so that's I'm quite, quite happy with that. And now I'm going to, actually I'm just going to leave it in there, but I'm going to bring in a pencil. So we've got Balmy Blue and also the other one I'm going to use is Not Quite Navy. And there's a few different ways you can colour with your pencils. And last time, I think, when we, when we used the teacups, um, I just coloured direct to the paper um, and really didn't apply much water or any water at all. I'm just here, I've just noticed, oh, there we go, because sometimes not much water comes out. So I tend to make sure I've got the right flow of water just on the back of my hand to test that I have, and I do. Um, so I'm going to start off with the balmy blue, and I am going to start direct to paper for the minute, but um, that's kind of just my starting point. So I'm just coming in where it will be darkest. Now in this particular, because it's a, a cylinder um, shape, I want a light, the light source to be coming from the front. And so right at the front here, I want that pretty much to stay quite white. I don't want to put a lot of color right at the very front. I want the darkness to be on the side and that's going to make it look like it's got a curve to it. And because it's got that blue behind it that's stamped, that's okay, that, that will work. Um, now I've got my aqua painter and now that I've put that color down with my pencil I can dip into it and pull it out into the middle there it softens it up I'll just bring that down so you can really get a good look it softens it out and it stretches the color but it doesn't look like pencil lines anymore. You've got that watercolour, got that watercolour feel. It's a combo of the watercolour paper working and the pencils working. You couldn't get the same effect with regular paper. You have to have the two. Uh, I'm just going to now hold my pencil and dip onto it with the aqua painter and I can use that to color as well so okay so I'm just going to leave that like that for the minute and then I'm going to come back to it in a little bit right so just gonna let it dry for a little little minute or two and that's kind of what I do with watercoloring. I'll start with one bit, then I'll let it dry and I'll go on with something else and then I'll come back to it. Um, if you're impatient, you know, I'm impatient all the time, but if you are impatient or you're time poor, you could hit it with your heat gun 
But I think in this particular instance, we've got other stuff to go on with, so we can just do that. So here is, I'm just popping in the flowers. I'll just come out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So this is one of the flowers, and I like this one because it's kind of like, it's kind of a wild bunch of flowers there. And what should I do? Yeah, okay, I'll do that. So I'm going to add, do some more of the stays on. Like so. It's very fine, light. It needs another go over. And that's half to do with stays on drying so quickly and half to do with it being watercolour paper. So you've got all those, um, you've got the indentations in the paper so it's hard for the ink to get a perfect coverage. So that is the beauty of having a positioning tool. Just keep going over it until you're happy. Now mostly I think up here is where it needs just a little bit more. Okay, happy with that coverage. So gosh, that took me like four full goes. So let's get our pencils out and see what's next. Then some new colors that we've got to play with. The one I, these two I think are kind of fun um, and colors that I think really add to our neutrals range quite a lot, which is the well, they're not actually in our neutrals range, but they're more of those kind of brownie colours. Crushed Curry and Cajun Craze. So I'm just going to add, again, a little bit of colour. Here, at, um, the Stampin' Up! artists give us a guide with water colouring or, um, or any of our colouring because they, they will put in spots where it should be shaded so you just use that so I've just colored over the spot that has already got some darker color on it from our image and I'm just now pulling out the color it's good to leave white in these um, these bits of uh, these little images sorry my train of thought got lost then leave white don't be afraid not to color the whole thing in it actually makes it look a lot better if you do leave white patches so you don't have to be a perfect you don't you don't have to actually perfectionism and watercoloring i think don't super go together it's better if you can be a bit more random with watercoloring okay so I've just used, this was crushed curry that I've just finished using and I'm going now over it with my aqua painter and just popping just a little bit of water and it's actually okay if that bleeds out a little bit and shows the yellow around it, kind of looks softer and looks more watercolory. I know that watercolory is not a real word but I'm sticking with it. And it activates the pencil, so it bleeds a little bit and it looks a little bit brighter too. Now I'm moving on from those ones and I'm going to go into, this is Granny Apple Green. So, I don't know, this is, someone's going to tell me what, the, what this kind of plant is here. It's probably a little easier to see on this image, it's some kind of some kind of flower I think anyway I'm sure I'm sure I'm coloring it the wrong color but you know what I don't really I don't mind so I'm just putting a little bit of gr the granny apple green on there and now I'm going to activate that watercolor pencil by adding just a little bit of water to it and spraying that out now I'm getting the garden green we also have in this range coastal cabana but i'm going to get the garden green and just go along the inside vein of those um, leaves 
just to add a little bit in there like so and then I'm missing it looks like an artichoke it does look like an artichoke do you think that it's an artichoke? Mm, I'm not sure. But anyways, so um, would you put an artichoke in a vase? Is that a thing? All right, so I'm just, now I'm activating this color. And you can see I just did a stripe. So I'm still keeping most of the color towards the center and leaving lots of white. And I'm even gonna bring in, we're, we're thinking it's an artichoke. A little bit of extra color there and a bit there let's just dob now I think we might even bring in a little bit of blue just to kind of blue and green I really like um, when you use a little bit of blue on your foliage adds a little bit of depth so I'm just going to activate that blue a little like so and I think that's looking pretty good I might add what do you guys think you think it's a succulent carol mm, could be um, just pop a little bit of the granny apple on one side just to use little highlights now. So I still want white to be there, but I just wanted a few little highlights. Now, last time I think I did blue berries, but I might actually make these ones pink, just for difference. So, I like that it's got the little berries. Cute. And then just to make them a little brighter, I'm going to my poor aqua painter. Needs a little bit of water. Like so. There we are. So I think that's almost done. I might just add a little bit of the yellow there. You know, you can fiddle around, I suppose, with these things, but um, at some point you have to just let it go. So anyways, so let's leave the flowers because I could keep fiddling. Hey Amanda, how are you going? Looks like a dragon fruit. Really? Okay. And, and, no, um, we're, we don't know. <laughs> we're going to have to, we're going to have to get um, a Stampin' Up! people to tell us. Hey Ruth, how are you going? Lovely guy to see you guys. All right, so let's come back to our, um, our vase because we've we've let that go for a little bit we've let it dry and now I'm coming in with the night of navy and I'm just bringing that in because you know once you've kind of laid down your color it's good to darken up those places that you want to be the darkest right so I'm just bringing in and under this lip I think it would be darkest like so and maybe the base there so let's now just activate that oh there's a little bit yellow on there doesn't matter let's activate that a little bit bring that in and if I'm still I'm still not quite happy with the darkness so I'm going to use my pencil on my aqua painter to get in a little bit more color and just lighten it blend it in like so 
It's pretty simple. There's not much. Does it need to be a little bit? I think it might need a little bit more. There we go. Now, I keep forgetting which is my colour here. A little bit more darkness on the edge. Like so. There we go. All right. So now I've finished with my colouring mostly. I'm just going to quickly hit it. With, uh, normally I wouldn't use this in my Stamper Artist, but I'm just being very careful and very light so it doesn't get too hot. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that in there and now I'm going to go back to my stays on. Now we talked about this oh, a couple of weeks ago, that this is a really good way of making sure that your outlines of your images um, stay nice and dark and really pop when you've used watercolour, oh, stuck to it, watercolour paper. So you just go back over it once you've finished colouring because the, the pencil lines sometimes go over the black and not make it quite so, stand out so much. Does that make sense? So go back over it with your stays on, give it another go. And we're going to do the same with our Weasel jug. Hopefully that didn't move too much when it got stuck on it. So go another. Okay, there we go. Really just darkens up, especially those black splotches on the side. Gives that some more definition and really makes it pop. Okay, last but not least on this one. The good thing is you've got a couple of these little doors on the Stamparata so you can interchange them. And we've got a cute little sentiment. So let's position that. It says, so grateful for someone like you in my life. And I've got a few of those people. I don't know about you, but I don't think you can tell people enough that, can you? So I'm going to just position it where I want it to be. Have a look at it straight on. Okay. Now, I'm not going to use the stays on on that one because I, I'm not colouring over the top of it. So I'm actually going to get my Memento Black to colour, to do the sentiment. And the reason being is that I, I do find my Mento Black is an easier black to get on. I'm just checking that I've got that nice and straight. Yes, I think so. My Mento Black does tend to be a bit juicier and it's not such a struggle to get a good image. Let's see. Now that I say that, it's still because of that watercolour paper you're still going to have to do it a couple of times to really darken it up I, I like the I just love the fact that you can do this you can make it nice and dark and make it stand out I mean there's no way you could get it in exactly the same spot in any other way Okay, so I think I've like done that five times, but you can. So there is, oh, I've missed a leaf. Why didn't you guys tell me I've missed a leaf? Hey, Memento Black is better for sentiments. Yeah, I like it. I like it for sentiments. I've missed a leaf. And I think I missed one there too. Holy smokes. Anyway, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just colouring empty spaces now. There we go. Alrighty. So let's just pop a little bit. It does kind of look like the vase is floating in air. So it's good to ground. I find it's good to, to ground your, um, your images a little bit. So you want to put a, like a table or something underneath of it, right? So I'm just going to actually get 
the, um, the card base that I had going that I'm going to be using and make a straight line. I'm, ha I'm getting my um, grid paper behind to help me with this. I could have used a ruler. Probably that would have been smarter. But you know, I am the r like random with my stamping. So there is, that looks all right, doesn't it? Now, let's see, does it even get rid of some of that blue? I've got a little bit of blue. You're gonna remember to keep cleaning in between with your aqua painter. And I'm just going to activate that pencil a little bit with some water softens it up and makes it look more like a shadow and grounds that image so it's not floating in midair which you know kind of is easier on the eye I think if it's not floating so here is our poor piece of black paper that I just used as a guide but that's okay being black and my bone folder hmm, is missing I'll use this one no I can see it now like so now that could probably have you know deal with a little bit of drying time but for the benefit of you guys watching at home I'm just going to stick this baby on like so. Now with um, with all these kind of cards where the watercolour paper can warp just a little bit um, because once you've added water to it and things, sometimes after I've you know, let it dry, I will stick it under something heavy for a little bit just to make sure it dries nice and flat. This one actually isn't too bad. But um, I can do that. Now the other thing I like to do after I've finished with my card, sometimes if it just needs a little bit of something extra, I might come in with our little, um, we've got these cute little journaling markers and just add like a couple of little dots around the place. I don't know it's just kind of a styling thing that I like you don't have to and with um, this card here I actually don't mind the layer of this one a little bit more but this one here that I did last night I kind of without it felt a little bit unbalanced so I ended up just drawing in a little flourish down there to balance it out I'm not sure if that worked or not but it was worth a try so that's kind of how I ended up with a little bit of a flow and that's just a handheld drawn one which you can definitely do that um, if um, if you feel like something's a bit unbalanced you could just color in a little bit of the flower or something like that but I just um, I just actually googled uh, flourish <laughs> and copied it Linda's asking have I always been good at art? I've always loved art I'm not sure that I've always been good at it but you know what helps is that um, stamped images I don't have to draw them I just have to color it in <laughs> so everyone can be good at art when you're using stamps right so um, and I just for me it's my happy place it's um, it's what calms me down and it's kind of like meditation so I love to color that's that's what I love so that is our cute little country home um, card using this stamp set using our beautiful pencils they are a dream if you haven't now let me just tell you these pencils are only available till the end of this month they might turn up in perhaps our next annual catalog or something they haven't they haven't discounted that but they haven't guaranteed us I think unless someone knows something I don't um, so if you are interested in purchasing these pencils, head to my blog, carolynbeading.com and purchase them um, this month because they are corkers. What did I say? 
did you say what color my background is yes so I used um balmy blue balmy blue and I just I just um, blotted it off once so it wasn't as strong and you can do that with so many you can use the blocks as a background square for so many different uses it's just a really fun way of putting like a background square on on your cards you've got this stamp at your hands all the time once you buy the the, um, the acrylic blocks they did suggest yes Wendy's um, backing me up but they're on that one saying they did suggest they would only be available for this month so get them if you want them and you want them <laughs> because they're so pretty look at them look at these pretty colors which I love and the greys from the um, the original set so you know if you love I mean I think watercolor pencils are just so so useful in just your everyday stamping let alone um, you know and really portable they're great actually I, I love the watercolor pencils if I'm just going away for the weekend and I just want to color a few cards because you really don't need um, you really don't need to take a lot of products with you. You can just take your watercolour pencils and aqua painter and some stamped images and you can colour away and it's, you don't have to take a lot of the ink pads, that kind of thing. So they're a really good little getaway tool. So there we go. I hope you like those cards and enjoyed the little colouring tutorial today. Um, it's going to flip up my poor craft room that is pretty much empty at the moment there's there's nothing here it's all going to be over at the craft retreat for the weekend so for my beautiful team that are watching from all over the place i'll be doing another facebook live for you guys exclusively this evening and um, doing a more in-depth watercolour class for you guys. Um, for the rest of you, if you're interested in joining my team and being part of all the stuff that we do, whether you're local here in Adelaide or whether you're Australia-wide, you're welcome to join. I've got a question and answer sheet on my blog, carolynbenny.com, what's involved, um, whether you're a hobby demonstrator or whether you want to do this as a business, I'm here for you. You like my jumper? I like it too. It's pretty. Um, so I will see you guys next week. I think that it's um, a pupil-free day, so I've got kiddos here, so that should be fun at school. But, you know, we just roll with the punches. So have a fabulous weekend, um, and I will be putting up the blog post as soon as possible. So um, I'll be doing that as soon as possible. And um, today being a retreat day, it's kind of a bit crazy, but I'll get to that as soon as possible and I will see you guys next week.